They told me. Son, you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. What's up, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Let's Replay Bioshock, I suppose. As you guys know, or may have known, I, I did a run of this game a long time ago, but uh, that was back with my old crappy recording setup on a computer that hardly runs, and I'll probably tell that story in more detail a little bit later. But I figured that um, after doing Deus Ex 3 and realizing how similar these two games are in many ways, I figured I'd go ahead and give this game another shot and really show it some justice this time and show off a lot more things I didn't show off last time doing it in full HD and uh, you know with my good recording setup and everything and give you guys the best experience possible because this like I said it's one of my all-time favorite FPS games it's in the top four and um, I want to see how it stacks up to Deus Ex 3 now that I've completed both games several times this will be the sixth time that I've played this game and the uh, probably damn near the 20th time that I've seen this opening sequence here due to all the times that I've not only played it myself but seen friends play it and watched other LPs here on YouTube. So um, this will give me the opportunity to go into a lot more story depth as well and explain some things about the story because um, hopefully I'll be able to play the audio diaries and let you guys hear them for yourselves if, if you don't plan on playing the game along with me. So you guys get the full experience of the story as well, and I'll know to be able to talk over them and everything, so that time is where it's convenient, so. We crash in the middle of the ocean, and there's a mysterious lighthouse here, so since it's the only source of land and we're pretty much the only survivor, we might as well go inside. But there's clearly a lot more to this place than meets the eye. Now, a little bit of history about this game. Um, this style of gameplay is, I'm going to explain more about it as we get into more detail, but this is sort of a dying genre of game. This was started back when um, the company Irrational did, uh, I guess no, now owned by uh, 2K, did uh, the, the sequel to System Shock. And System Shock 2 is very much a game like this, where uh, you basically ran around an enclosed nonlinear level collecting loot. And there's, you know, slight RPG elements here and there. It was sort of a subgenre of FPS games that played primarily on PC and was adapted by the Deus Ex franchise. And I guess today is sort of what we know now is sort of like the Fallout 3 formula. I am Andrew Ryan, and I'm here to ask you a question. Is a man not entitled to the sweat of his brow? Yeah, as the intro said, this takes place in 1960, so it's very old school. <laughs> and all the better for it. It belongs to God. No, says the man in Moscow. It belongs to everyone. I rejected those answers. Instead, I chose something different. I chose the impossible. I chose rapture. Gotta tell you, if you went into this this game not knowing anything about it and seeing this opening scene here, you would probably be blown away. This is one hell of an opening we got here. I never get tired of seeing this. And there's some guy working on that tunnel up there. Looks like he's got a quite a lot of gear on. There's a giant whale down there. Just kind of chilling right in the middle of the city. Yeah, I don't care where you live. You probably don't have whales flying by your windows on a daily basis. So yeah, this game has a lot of style. And it's very much uh, sort of a steampunk-esque setting uh, with the aesthetic of things. So basically, I'm going to be comparing uh, this game to Deus Ex 3. In, in just the ways that they're similar, not necessarily in the ways that they're different, because comparing apple to, apples to oranges is not really what I'm going for, but um, 
I just want to compare them in only the aspects that they're similar and just go based off of that to determine which one is better. I, I'm, there's lots and lots of reasons. Probably There's probably more reasons why they're different than reasons why they're similar, but as far as the style goes, it's basically just based on what you prefer, um, Cyberpunk versus Steampunk. And I really can't, I really can't determine at this early stage in the LP which one I prefer. I'll get back to you guys on that one. This is very much going to be a post Deus Ex 3 LP where having played that game is really going to determine how I feel about this one now compared to the last run I did. Now in the last run I did, this is where I started the game, was at this scene. I had skipped the intro scene, but I figured since I did all of the story stuff in uh, Deus Ex 3 while showing cutscenes, I figured I could show all the storyline stuff in this game even though it's sort of the Half-Life fashion of there's only two cutscenes in the entire game, the beginning and the ending. So I figured I'd show all the story stuff because it's all in-game anyway. Is it someone new? Jesus Christ. Yeah, that is not a pleasant sight to first come to when entering the city. We just, we almost died. We have no idea where we are. We've stumbled upon something that we didn't even know exi could exist, yet alone did exist. And now we're being attacked by freaky monster guys. Not a good day so far. If you wish. I don't know how you survived that plane crash, but I've never been one to question Providence. I'm Atlas, and I aim to keep you alive. Now keep on moving. We're gonna have to get you to higher ground. Take a deep breath. Well, that's reassuring that we have a friend in this place at least. We're gonna need to draw out of hiding, but you're gonna have to trust me. So we're in control of the game now. Pretty much all we can do is uh, walk and jump at this point. We can't uh, do anything else yet. We don't have any weapons or any equipment or anything like that. Just a bit How do you like that, mister? The hell is that thing? Yeah, there's a lot of really weird gadgets in this place, and I'll explain more about that later. If the game will let us pick it up, we're going to pick up our first weapon here. There we go. It's a melee weapon. It's a wrench. This is also a throwback to System Shock 2, as, as well as the title, for that matter, Bioshock. But, um... Uh, it's, it's your basic melee weapon, sort of like any melee weapon in the first Deus Ex or the Crowbar in Half-Life. And these are enemies, they are splicers, we'll explain what the title splicer comes from later, but they're basically completely insane inhabitants of this place, this rapture place, and uh, there are several different varieties of them. The first enemy type we have here are thuggish splicers, and they use melee attacks, and more on that later as well. So, like in Deus Ex 3 and System Shock 2 before, we basically explore around and collect loot. And, um, you can loot bodies of enemies you kill, and you can find loot in storable items, much like in uh, the games I previously mentioned. I'm going to be going through this quite fast and without even realizing it just because of how much, how well I know this game, being it's the sixth time through. So I'm not going to hesitate to go for something really fast without giving myself enough time to explain it, so. Sorry about that. What do we do to ourselves? We're shooting lightning at our fingertips. We're just not right in the head right now. Don't kill me, please. I would have rather died from the fall. Or the plane crash, for that matter. Holy crap. Mommy, I had this bad dream. There was this guy in this big diving suit, and he had a drill on his arm. He was really scary. And there was this creepy little girl who had yellow eyes, and she kept calling me an angel.
Yeah, this game can be a little weird at first, but it explains it all in proper context later on, so... We have our first ability here, the plasmids. They are genetic modifications that allow us to do completely ridiculous things, like fire lightning out of our fingertips. And uh, how that's possible will be explained later on, and believe me, the explanation is pretty ridiculous. You're not going to believe it when you hear it, but I want to go ahead and stock up on some more um, health kits, that which restore our health. And uh, Eve Hypos, which restore our uh, consumable ener plasma energy, and... Um, the Electro Bolt, the first one we get, allows us to shock things and open the door controls that are shorted out like that. There'll be several times where we're required to do that. Hey look, it's the other half of the plane! We didn't miss it that badly. We would've been happy if it stayed where it was. Especially if it was gonna do this. Okay, getting out of here. So this is basically going to be, um, how the combat works, is we have, uh, we have weapon attacks and we have plasma attacks. And uh, it's not really like melee. The, a common misconception, I can't tell you how many times I've seen this happen, is I've seen people play this game and they've started spamming plasmids at an enemy over and over again, expecting it to work like spells in Oblivion. But really how it works is instead of it being sort of an elemental attack where it does a crap ton of damage, it's not a magic spell, it's, a, it's basically a status infliction where it'll cause an effect on the enemy that'll leave it um, more, more vulnerable to other attacks. So you have to use your weapons and plasmids in conjunction in order to get the most desired result. Because sometimes your weapons just don't do the job and a lot of times the plasmids don't do the job. So there's a demonstration of what I'm talking about there. The electric bolt stuns an enemy and makes it more susceptible to damage. So we can do what Atlas calls the one-two punch and just zap him and whack him as he says. So. Um, and that's going to be our initial way of uh, doing combat right here. Here's another status infliction we're going to see here, and this is uh, an enemy that's on fire. And so they are also more susceptible to damage, and they slowly drain health as they uh, as the fire lingers. They also tend to flee from combat, and they don't, they're not as uh, accurate. There's various different things that come... They just basically flail around like crazy when they're on fire, so... I, and I love that about the game's plot. The game is right off the... I know I mentioned this before in the original run, but right off the bat, the game is just like, here's here's someone who wants to help you in this crazy place, and here's your motivation. Right off the bat, you have a motivation. So it's like, this is the best kind of FPS game. This and Half-Life 2, and Deus Ex as well for that matter. Games where you have a motivation clear off the bat. You have a reason for wanting to be wielding a gun. Speaking of which, we can now wield a gun. It's a pistol, it's a revolver pistol, and uh, it supposedly looks like a Webley Mark VI, although it doesn't fire uh, 45 caliber rounds like the Webley Mark It fires uh, 38 like the Webley Mark IV, so even the game developers realized that the Webley Mark IV looks stupid and decided to go with the VI model. But uh, we can hardly blame them. There's a quick uh, headshot demonstration for you there to show how. Um, the weapon works. It's it's not all that powerful and like a magnum should be, but um, it's decent enough. I like it, but um, the nice thing about it is you can get headshots like that and finish off enemies with one shot. Later in the game, there'll be even tougher enemies will even or even common enemies rather will not be susceptible to instant death from headshots from this thing at least. But um, it's good enough as is. We're gonna conserve our ammo because much like in Deus Ex, we don't have that much at the start. But um. Also, we, uh, and also I demonstrated the electric bullet in the water there. That's another thing, is if you zap enemies that are in water, it usually instantly kills them unless they're immune to electricity, which can happen later in the game. But um, the nice thing about this game is you don't. there's no inventory management bull crap. You don't have to worry about all that crap. You just pick up an item and you immediately consume it unless it's something that you can activate later, like a health kit or ammo. So if you pick up food, you automatically consume it. You pick up like alcohol or tobacco, you automatically consume it. So you want to be careful what you consume because some of them can have negative effects like alcohol and cigarettes can reduce one of your stats. Now what we're listening to right now is the first of many audio diaries, much like in a lot of games that I've played recently. There's audio diaries, but in this game they, they basically tell you all the story. All the backstory is told through the audio diaries. and. 
Um, the story of Diane McClintock here is actually a pretty interesting one, and it's one we'll be hearing a lot throughout the game. She ha she basically has a subplot, a secondary story that we'll be listening to throughout the game. So we don't get the whole story, but it's actually very interesting to listen to. I, I went ahead and adjusted my setup off screen there, so I could turn off the turn on the subtitles because I realized they weren't on. That'll definitely help in being able to talk over some of this dialogue, because I want to be able to play all the audio diaries, but at the same time I want to keep talking. So. Just turn on the subtitles. Another splicer coming out of this bathroom star right here, so I'm gonna zap him and shoot him in the head. And obviously, we're gonna loot them before we continue on. Yeah, pretty much we're only fighting uh, thuggish splicers here. There's another new enemy type, the leadhead splicer, which wields a gun, and we'll be able to take them down and loot the ammo from them. The only problem is, sometimes later in the game, the subtitles can get stuck in a line and they won't progress when more dialogue comes. So hopefully I'll be able to avoid that throughout this LP. What the hell are these things? Context, Atlas. E explanation, would you kindly? Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get involved in this one. Christ. That's the big daddy. She got well, it sucks to be him. Anyway, that was a scripted event. The game does do very well at hiding scripted events to where, even though they're happening in gameplay, the game still attracts your attention towards things that you can willingly look away from without making it seem too obvious. So, it's not quite as good as Half-Life 2, how Half-Life 2 did that, but it's still up there. It's pretty good. So basically our form of combat in this level is essentially just going to be, uh, oh, if I didn't mention it, the two audio diaries that I got, make sure you pick those up if you're going for the achievement to get all of them because um, I'm playing on the Xbox 360 version, by the way, if I didn't say so earlier. As I, as you probably have already come accustomed to with my LPs, I own only an Xbox 360 and a... Uh, I own an Xbox 360, a Wii, and a PS2, and that's it. Aside from handhelds, but I can't record off of handhelds yet. But, um... Oh, if you didn't go down there to get the other audio diary before, when uh, Atlas said if you spot a splicer in the, lo in the water hit him with the electric bolt, he would say it now. But, um... There was a dead big daddy here, but uh, those the two audio diaries in this level, um, you have to get them if now, and you can't come back and get them later. We can't come back to this level later, so those are two that you can miss and mess up the achievement right off the bat if you don't do it right. So we've been closed off, and so now we're gonna have to hold out until the door opens and the plot progresses. So there's a really easy way of doing with it, of dealing with this, and that is uh, first of all kill all the splicers that are lingering around here. And then wait for the splicers that are coming from upstairs to drop down into the water, and then just electrocute them as they as they fall into the water. And it's it's literally shooting fish in a barrel or um, splicers in the water, I guess. But uh, yeah, it, it's incredibly easy. There's really no, no strategy to it after that point. They just they just jump in helplessly, even though they they've seen countless comrades fall before them. They just jump right in and die. So. That's a really quick and easy way of dealing with that. That, that may, I made that look a lot easier than it really is the first time through the game at least. I had a bit of trouble on that and I had to cower in a corner. But I don't beat yourself up too much if you die because the penalty for dying is... Well, I guess I'll explain that a little bit later when we actually die. <laughs> Here's the news. Rapture isn't some 
sunken ship for you to plunder. And Admiral Ryan isn't a giddy socialite who can be slapped around by government muscle. And with that, farewell. Or thus the bomb, yeah? Whichever. <laughs> That must be the big boss man who built this place. Crap, get us out of here. Okay, thanks, Atlas. Jeez. <laughs> 